If you compare skills that make you a good engineer now versus 10 years ago, those skills are quite different. 10 years ago, you could get a job as engineer just by knowing HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and one additional JS framework. But now tools for development have gotten quite better and the desired skills for engineers have moved just from pure knowing programming languages and frameworks to problem solving abilities and people skills. It's less about the tasks, but how big of an impact you can create. And engineers who can create the biggest impact have the multiplier mindset. If you don't know me yet, my name is Gregor and I am the founder of Engineering Leadership Newsletter. And in this video, I'll be sharing why engineers must become multipliers in the AI era. Now let's get straight into today's topic. Okay, so let's first talk about why actually the way we build software these days has fundamentally changed. And we mentioned a bit ab about this uh, before that, you know, building software 10 years ago versus now is totally different. But, you know, tools are much better right now. And uh, we can see being, you know, coding and, and building software being accessible to to other people, not only engineers as well, like, you know, tools like Lovable, Replit, uh, and so on. They offer a chance to people to, to just, you know, uh, create software via prompting. But the problem is that, uh, you know, if, if you are building software that way, it's hard to, to build software that is maintainable, that is scalable, that is going to be, you know, good in security, and so on. And that's where AI-assisted engineering is the way to go. And AI-assisted engineering means that um, you are building software by using and utilizing all of different tools, but at the same time, you still keep in mind the core gr great engineering fundamentals as a first priority. So you use AI when it makes sense, not everywhere, but you use it to actually make you more productive and better. And um, yeah, so th that's, in my opinion, one of the best ways to, to build software these days is AI-assisted engineering. Pure web coding is just for, uh, you know, building quick prototypes or, or potentially building internal tools that are not less, that are not so critical and are more presentational as well. And also important to mention is that engineers are less expected to just work on, on pure requirements these days. It's engineers are getting a lot closer also to the why, to the, to the what and the when, not only the how. There is something that we're going to talk about uh, next. This is something that uh, Migda Jeffer, uh, OpenAI's product lead, has mentioned. And uh, we can see this uh, happening already in a lot of startups and smaller to mid-sized companies. Uh, and a good example is, for for, uh, for example, Lovable is that that good example is one of the fastest growing startups in, in Europe. They don't hire product managers. They, their engineers are owning the full full uh, life cycle, right? They they provide the the uh, the ideas and they provide the um, they provide the, uh, the the initiatives on what what things to build, why to build, and also when to build them. And then they also own uh, you know the how part as well, obviously as engineers. So I I see this happening a lot more and more across the industry in many different uh, companies, and it it makes it makes a lot of sense. Uh, especially when we're going to talk about later uh, in, in this video about, uh, you know, many companies deciding to flatten the orgs organizations uh, and, uh, you know, unfortunately doing a bit of layoffs to, to middle managers. But with, with that expectation comes that, uh, you know, more and more engineers are, are taking additional responsibilities. And that means, you know, being more, se more self-managed and uh, taking initiatives themselves. So, um, yeah, you can see how big of a difference it is between, you know, being a great engineer 10 years ago. Um, you needed to only know uh, and understand one program, programming languages and one framework. For example, if you, if you knew React or knew, you, you knew Angular 10 years ago, you could get a job uh, really, really quickly. But right now, that is, uh, that is already expected, right? That is something that, um, you know, people that hire engineer already things that hey this is this is what you should know and this is additionally what you should be good at so yeah um right now the it has changed drastically on what does it mean to be a great engineer 
as we mentioned before as tools have become better and better what really becomes important are the human related skills and being good at problem solving and as i mentioned you know this is already expected you know having good engineering fundamentals and understanding uh, the technologies that that you work with but ultimately where you want to be is being an engineering multiplayer and uh, this is what is actually let's call it a 10x engineer in the AI era is the one that is an engineering multiplier so let's talk about what does actually this mean next being an engineering multiplier means that you are making others around them better around, around you better you amplify the productivity and effectiveness of everyone around you not just you know focusing on your own output but also elevating the entire team so ultimately you focus on on finding impact yourself making everyone around you better finishing the project that are going to be uh, you know provide value to the business to the organization to the team uh, to the customers as well and so on um, you're not just focusing on your own tasks and you know on, on having clear definition of what is expected to be done but you are actually the one who is looking proactively to find impactful work and filling in those missing pieces those are exactly the skills that are going to be more and more important as time time goes on as tools are getting better and better um, things that you can do without you know being being for example being managed right you need to be told what what is important and what not you know already you 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 proactively find out the problems and and focus on them and you know at the same time you're sharing you're sharing your knowledge you're 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 mentoring and you're mentoring others around you you're helping others to be more efficient more effective and so on that's what actually being an engineering multiplier means uh, an engineering multiplier is actually the combination of words engineering obviously engineering and then force multiplier and force multiplier means exactly that is you know making let's say five ten people around you better so it's kind of a good combination of engineering and also being a force multiplier okay so um yeah let's let's talk about how this looks like in practice so um let's go to the first one which is you know improving team efficiency that may be you you write a certain documentation you write a certain uh, you know guideline you write a certain uh, style guide um, you provide certain you find certain tools that make everyone around you better uh, you provide workflows you provide improvements for uh, suggestions to to make the full process the whole process better uh, you you actively challenge requirements for certain projects and provide simpler solutions you find ways to to improve the whole team and the project that, that the, you know that the whole team is working on the second thing you know you share knowledge you don't keep knowledge to yourself you because the problem is with doing that you become a bottleneck but you actively look to help others around you by um, ensuring that whatever you're learning you're also sharing and also a good thing about this is that you also learn yourself a lot more when you're sharing knowledge knowledge than actually keeping knowledge to yourself so it's a win-win activity you learn something you share it you actually know it a lot better you also raise the quality bar that is very important like for example uh, you're always looking for tools to improve the the code quality you're looking to uh, you know to 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 make good pr reviews you are uh, you're looking to, to you know to to do technical mentorship of, of of the people that you work with you're always looking to improve uh, you know the way things are getting built uh, improve the quality of the of the code that is actually being being uh, deployed to production looking for tools and looking for ways to improve that and so on also you enable better decisions uh, you know focus on building the right things and then the let the uh, focus on building the right things first and then building the things right that is very important um, you make sure that you know whatever is getting built is going to be uh, helpful to, to the customers to the users is going to solve their problems and we mentioned also you know you mentor and empower others you make everyone around you better and so on uh, you are onboarding new engineers you make sure that the onboarding documentation is 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 done correctly and so on. Y you're not just you know focusing on pure tasks that are assigned to you but you look for proactively making things 
around you better those are the skills that are going to be more and more important as as time goes on and let's put this into actual uh, um, you know kind of uh, actual real real time scenario and uh, obviously you've probably seen this uh, this meme uh, before around social media and uh, this is a meme where like there's there's high expectations of you know of a certain job job description and those kind of things are becoming more and more common in our industry and i've seen this uh in in different companies comp try to look for you know a lot of different skill set but uh the reality is that uh the companies don't really need all of this you know you need to be an expert in all of these technologies in order to do well in the in the position that's where you know a lot of companies are get are getting that wrong instead they are, they're actually looking for engineering multipliers they don't need an expert with all of this this skill set even if if it's written like that that's not actually what what they need and it's not even realistic it's impossible to be an expert in all of these technologies so what actually uh this looks like in practice like if you are they're actually looking for engineering multipliers and not every not someone that is expert in all of these uh, technologies so for example you're an expert in python and um, you can apply your knowledge in understanding, you know, Python as a programming language in also like being productive in Java and PHP if you need it. And you can do that by using AI and also understanding, uh, you know, good programming fundamentals because you know and uh, you work with Python for, for, for a long time. So you have a good understanding of programming fundamentals. And the same thing you can do with, you know, Angular, like, for example, if you are good in React, you can learn Angular if needed by being resourceful. That means you, you can go and, and, and check tutorials. You can you can ask uh, you know other people who are experts in Angular. You can um, you you can, there, there's so many different resources available that uh, for you to learn Angular. Similar with you know uh, with learning MongoDB. If you're an expert in if, sorry if you if you work with uh, PostgreSQL and Redis before, then you can also learn MongoDB be because uh, you know it's it's quite similar mentality with PostgreSQL, but just, just a bit different uh, concept with um, with documents and, and not tables, right? Uh, but, you know, because you understand how databases work in general, you're going to be able to grasp uh, how MongoDB works as well. Obviously, you're not going to be an expert, and but the thing is that you can consult with experts on particular topics when, when you need it, and that's where, you know, being resourceful is very important. That's where engineering multipliers are are doing uh you know um, that that's what multi engineering multipliers are, are actually doing you know they they look for people in their network inside a company inside an organization and they look for experts in particular people and they work with them to uh, to learn and help them in particular projects and so on similar with you know aws s3 if, if you know that already you you can you can get you know you can learn more detailed uh, specifics on an a AWS as well. You can do that by asking questions to others, uh, or or you can also check tutorials and so on. And uh, yeah, similar with then with every other other thing, uh, you know, Unix system administration. If you if you worked with uh, Windows uh, sysadmin before, you can you can then um, you really understand some of the concepts behind it. Similar with Git, CI, <laughs> and TDD, obviously those three things are not that really connected. Uh, obviously, Git is something that uh, you probably work with uh, a lot of times before. CI/CD is something that obviously a good, um, you know, it, every every good project needs to have a CI/CD pipeline. And then TDD, you know, even if if you haven't been working with TDD uh, at the moment. Uh, if you've been doing some some testing, integration testing, uh, unit testing, you, you you can quickly grasp uh, the concept of TDD as well. And similar with Docker and Kubernetes, if you understand Docker, you will even more easily uh, be able to learn Kubernetes. So the key here is that you know you are you are not a person who knows everything, but is able to learn if it's needed. That is the key thing, and that is that is what actually engineering multiplier uh, means. So uh, this is the full formula, right? Uh, with good human related skills, with good people skills, like leadership, teamwork, good communication, being a great person to work with, empathy and over emotional intelligence, intelligence, and also being a good s at solving problems, being pragmatic, being resourceful, utilizing AI tools, 
business understanding, deep, having a deep understanding of, of a relevant topic. With those skills, you can learn or get everything you need and to provide impact. You can make an impact in any project. So always, always keep this in mind. Have the right tool belt, tool belt d- develop the right tool belt of skills that you can learn or get any specific information as you need. That is the biggest leverage in the in these times. It's not about how much things are you knowing right now, but how fast you can get what you need when you need it. Always keep this in mind. So yeah, and also the last but not uh, least uh, least thing is uh, obviously you 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 heard about uh, the trend about flattening uh, the orgs, especially in big tech uh, like Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and, and and potentially some other companies. Um, with the, the, they are doing layoffs. A lot of you know the middle management is uh, unfortunately being affected by some of these uh, layoffs, and companies are looking to have a bit more reports reporting to one manager, right? Maybe like some time ago, there was like five, six reports to to one manager, but now it has grew, for example, to eight to 10 reports. And what this means is that automatically when a manager has more people that are reporting to them, it means that more engineers are expected to be self-managed and and uh, self uh, starters, uh, self initiative, uh, self initiative to to do uh, and find impact. Right, that is exactly what what we have been talking about today. And uh, you know, being proactive, being a person that is proactive, looking to find impactful things to work on. This is what is the most. This is what is becoming the more and more expected thing in current times, and is going to be in the future as well. So yeah, I hope uh, this was uh, this was helpful. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can subscribe to my newsletter. It's called Engineering Leadership. There are more than 170,000 people already reading it, and I publish two new articles every week. Uh, so yeah, that's it for today, and I'll see you on the next one.